As I keep using this machine, I'm getting more and more confident, and I'm really excited to announce that I finally broke the thousand layer mark on this build. Check this out. I've been recording all of my builds just to kind of keep track of what's going on behind the scenes. You never know what could happen. And in this particular build, I had a really weird thing happen in the beginning. And you can see it right about here. On the right side, there's a C-shaped object that got plowed across. And I had like two or three layers where it did kind of damage the rest of the build. But thankfully, it didn't totally catastrophically fail. And uh, because of that, and this is a, a quick little shot of the follow-up model. This is not part of the one I was just time-lapsing. After that, I changed the orientations to move them around, and now the C-shapes are on the left side and the back and, and part of the front. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's really going to help in the long term, but at least now, if it fails, it just sort of fails off into the pit instead of scraping across the whole thing. So anyway, going back to the the 1040 layer build here. I'm trying to maximize the usage of this bed, not just in the X and Y, which with my calibration grid, I can um, really find out the best possible layout I can make in the X and Y direction, but also in the Z. And that's what this uh, particular time lapse is trying to show. Uh, I've been recording these things and then watching the videos to make sure there isn't anything else that could inform better uh, sintering. I'm not going to force you to go through the whole thing here. Um, a thousand layers is a lot. And then you excavate it, so you just basically pull all of the geometry out. When I have something this tightly packed, it's essentially like one element. It's, it's a lot of geometry in one tiny little place. Some of these things are separated by a half millimeter distance. And uh, you just basically lift the bed as high as you can go and then grab it and pull it out. And uh, here I'm just scraping away all the powder. I didn't have any fusion, which is great. Um, my temperatures were just right on. And then you just use the toothbrush to um, clean off any extraneous powder. So just finished cleaning up uh, the 1,040 layer build that I did last night. Um, this is a lot of SDLs. I think it was like 126 or something like that. Um, there were just a handful of flat parts that didn't finish at the very top, but um, this is a lot. I mean, just for some scale, like here's pliers, and you can fit a lot of geometry in there. I used probably half my powder just um, to make all this stuff because it was packed in very tight. But this is a really good sign. You know, the quality is really good. I had a few spots where I had some lines, and that was at the very top. I think my Galvo is off. Otherwise, most of this is pretty, pretty outstanding. And I didn't get any fusion, so I was worried because I had the temperatures up to 173.8 near the end and there was no fusion of the powder um, it just worked out great so I think I got this thing tuned in I'm gonna check my gobbles and make sure they're not just a hair loose because it was near the top and I had uh, some mismatch on my hatch about maybe less than a half of a millimeter on just a handful of parts so um, maybe my gobbles loose also maybe the the patterning doesn't really work that well once you get over a thousand layers so that could be another issue but I almost got the full build which is 1100 and it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get to 1100 just because if I move the slots on my on my uh, limit switches I can get it to go a little bit lower but I think this is about as far as I can go as maximum capacity on one job and this job took, I think, 15 hours to print. So it was a long, it was a long print, but overall it worked great. And I'm just going to keep tuning it, see if I can get, um, you know, a little better quality. Otherwise, I think it's, I think it's solid. You know, I had one part that actually was fused with the other one. And I wonder if I have it. 
No, I, I, I just cut it off. So I overlapped two parts by accident. And I cut it with the wire cutters just to see, you know, what it was like on the inside. And it's a solid cross-section. I know that they're not technically rated to hold water, but I'd have to think that they'd hold water. Because it doesn't seem like there's any layers in it. It just looked like solid plastic on the inside. It's really strong, too. Like, I, I used my, uh, my clippers to break it apart, and it didn't just cut through it like soft plastic. It took a good amount of force to cut through about an eighth inch diameter piece of this plastic. And uh, also I made a four centimeter long section of, you know, just like a length of plastic that was vertical. And it turned out my Z was off just by a tiny bit. So I recalibrated it as well just to make sure my Z is right because the calibration grid or the calibration square is, um, you know, it's, it's a nice thing for X and Y, but the Z coordinate, you just have a five millimeter dimension. So I made this four centimeter one in this bed as well. I just found a spot where I could nestle in a little vertical extrusion. So that just gives me even an extra bit of calibration, but it was off by a fraction of a percent. So I doubt it would, it would even really make much difference on this particular build. Anyway, so far so good, I'm gonna keep going.